Hello. Everyone at one point or another has worried about if they're going to lose their job, if they're going to get fired, if they're going to get laid off, if there's going to be another job for them to, to get to, if there's going to be another job for them to be hired at, if there's going to be another position for them to climb up the ladder to achieve their goals, if the training that they're currently going through in college or university is, is going to propel them to a market that is going to lead them to a job. Our world has shrunk through the efforts of the internet, through shipping, through travel, and able to let us communicate on a global scale, shrinking our globe and causing an effect called globalization that has shaped our economy, our workforce, and the way we prepare our young through secondary and post-secondary educations. Through outsourcing and effective globalization, many of these jobs that we rely on to go to after university or as more of a labor and working class force, these jobs that we rely on have left for cheaper labor forces around the world and have changed the way our society is um, being trained, the, the way that we approach jobs and the different jobs that are available to us in the United States. And yeah. My name is Michael Buxton and I'm a sociology student at Miracosta and have a business degree and five years of international business experience. Today I'm going to be talking about this trend of globalization and its effect on our workforce. The first thing I'm going to be doing today in my talk is talking about taking a step back from globalization in the United States and in the first world and looking at where these jobs are going. We're going to be looking at the two countries of India and Mexico and looking at trends that are being caused in those countries where all these jobs that are leaving the United States and the UK and Europe and all these different places and going to these places of Mexico and India to um, to uh, to see if there might be some trends that we can help bring back to the United States to help us be a more competitive uh, global market and uh, allow us to have a more vibrant uh, workforce and, and job force. The next thing we're going to talk about is how has globalization changed our workforce? What jobs do we need to be training our, our, our workforce here in the United States? And how is that going to make us more competitive as a nation and have a more vibrant economy? The third thing we're going to talk about is how is this, these needs in our workforce, how is this going to change how we approach higher education and how we train our individuals to be then trained for positions that allow us to have um, more jobs and a, a very open and available workforce. In looking at India, we think and we talk about outsourcing. We think about all the uh, all the call centers that have been sent to India and all how this must have changed their their system and their workforce. In a study um, that Bomak did in 2004, he looked at these movement of jobs specifically in India and looking at more of its scale of globalization and outsourcing on a much smaller scale. Looking at companies that wanted to bring, do a similar thing of taking high paid working jobs and moving them to a pay, place of lower working jobs. And the way he did this is he looked at companies that wanted to go from the big city where people were making a lot more money than they were in the rural areas. When they did this, it had a very negative effect on the amount of jobs leaving that area. There was a high impact of unemployment. There was all those people that were working those jobs needed to find something else. And it started in his study, Bomak started to talk about what would happen if as the working force of India has become more and more structured and more and more powerful, the workforce and individuals within that society are going to demand more and more as far as benefits, wages, and other compensations, which is going to drive their dollar value up in the eyes of the corporations all over the world, which is then going to creep up their cost and possibly allow for another shift of all these globalization jobs that have ended in places like India and move them elsewhere. And if all these mass jobs moved elsewhere, it would essentially crash their economy and would have a travesty in their society. And we look at this, we, we look at the fears that could happen in India, which is essentially that happened to us. Um, Bomox goes on a little bit further to say, okay, this is a, this is a uh, even greater fear in India because it's not as a vibrant economy. 
it's not as diversified, and all these different things. But it's interesting to see that the effects of globalization are continuing, and without a real structured impact of globalization and how it's going to affect the world, it could essentially have this cyclical effect that moves from crashing economy to crashing economy to crashing economy. And if it wasn't counteracted earlier, it might not have this effect. Looking at our, at our international neighbor to the south, looking at Mexico, very interesting aspects of globalization happening in Mexico, a less vibrant economy, economy than the United States, our proximity very near. In a 2005 study by Garcia, he looked at the proximity, proximity of the United States to Mexico and the destination of all these, um, just an easy route of destination of all these jobs. So very, um, here us in San Diego, we have the ability to outsource jobs into Mexico and to Tijuana with a much lower, um, much lower cost of, uh, cost of labor. We're able to, as businessmen, as um, small owner, business owners, able to in one day drive across the border to visit our facilities and our manufacturing plants. And it seems to be a relatively, um, you know, relatively easy, easy transition, close proximity, lower payment, all these things. The negative effects of globalization, obviously, of taking away the U.S. jobs and moving them somewhere else, but Garcia went on to talk about how this impact has slightly increased and bettered the economy of Mexico, kind of equalizing slightly the economy of the United States and Mexico. Um, he looked at it even further and just say that this made a minor change, but really the great worry and fear of Mexico is that the working class has been very, very deprived um, with horrible working conditions and a long history of this, well, the wealthy have strived, and this economy in Mexico has become very um, disjointed and in in very wealthy and, and very, very poor. So much fact that the, the poor working conditions of the poor has caused about one-fifth the workforce of Mexico to leave um, Mexico and come to the United States, which has kind of caused two interesting a a aspects for us as a society in the United States. One, we have one-fifth the workforce of the lower um, um, of lower lower waged workers, manufacturing jobs, labor jobs, service jobs coming into the into the United States. We've had a outflux of all these jobs going to places like India, where it has brought down the amount of jobs available, and now we have more people in looking at that bottom aspect, and uh, it started to almost have a trend of a, instead of a diamond shape, an hourglass shape, similar to that of Mexico, kind of an interesting foreshadowing of possibility what, if things aren't counteracted soon, what may happen in the United States of having an even more disjointed um, wealthy and working class. So when we start looking at work and the way that work has changed through globalizations, we look at a, at a paper done by Chun and Evans in 2009, basically stating that globalization has changed how work is performed, by who, where, and whom. Uh, basically, the effects of globalization making the world a much different place in the way we do work. We're able to work three different shifts around the globe, doing a similar job, and, and instead of taking three days to have something done that can be easily passed on, it's now achieved in, in, in one day. Whereas we had to have people working around the clock in a facility, working night shifts and all that, we can just move it to a different part of the globe. All these things of globalization are not necessarily negative, but it's changed the way everything has worked. Um, John and Evans kind of go into kind of the effects of, okay, how can we... How can we bring jobs back? What jobs are important in globalization and all that? And start to look at the actual functionality of globalization. So this ability to use the world in a smaller place, uh, essentially through travel and communication, how can we then invest jobs in it? Well, all these processes that are being used 
to function um, globalization and the shrinking of the world are the jobs that are going to be um, vast and important. This is going to be such as uh, use of internet, cell phones, satellite communication, digitization, and miniaturization of all these different things. They also go on, so in, in all these different jobs, so this is what the workforce needs to, in the United States needs to work on to have our competitive edge. We need to invent and create new systems to allow for better functionality and processes that now function in, in this world of globalization. Another aspect and effect of globalization is the fact that we have, um, with all the availability of collaboration all over the globe, we have lots more minds looking at problems simultaneously than we have ever before. So the victories and the innovations are uh, happen at a much faster rate than that of the ones before. So competitive edge is only sustained for a small bit. So it really needs to continue to continually grow to become a, a vast competitive edge as we've had and been used to in the past here in the United States. We need to, uh, according to Chun and Evans, we need to bolster the middle class by creating more diverse workforce and create more education. So more secondary educated individuals, more, um, more jobs that have a diverse um, skill set and train skill set, maybe not to the level, a high, high level, but the ability to take these aspects of globalization and uh, make innovations that spread, spread the globe and then allow the, the good aspects of globalization to, uh, to allow for, for um, systems like food, communication, technology, power, all these systems to reach the greater world that may not have access to these uh, the, these systems that allow for a, a better quality of life and a, a better um, better society. So, as they're talking about, um, as China and Evans were talking about in their study in 2009 that we were just talking about, they create more education. So what does that mean, more education? Well, really what it means is that how can we create a global, a more competitive global workforce is by creating a more competitive global um, educated system. So it really just spans down. How are we going to get to this uh, system of global globalization um, sur uh, surrounded jobs? So we're going to have to train um, our youth to then be able to go into those jobs and be competitive in the global market. And in a 2011 study done by Kolb, he cautions that um, modern um, modern systems and modern Policies such as No Child Left Behind can be readily um, met by lowering standards and dumbing down tests and de-incentivizing the, the, the wealthy and the smart that are eventually going to go and make these innovations that are going to change um, the way we do globalization, that are, we're going to be able to create businesses around, that we're going to be able to be more competitive globally. And Kolb cautions that this could really be slowing us down as a workforce because the once out of education these individuals are not ready to make the innovations and the changes in our world to then basically be able to monetize that. Also, according to Cole, the world has changed, our society's needs are different, and the technology virtually every aspect of the workforce and education. There again, we need to use the virtual world and use the um, ability to communicate, to push education forward and to make, possibly make it different. He, he kind of is kind of taking that into the, the next level that was talked about in the workforce is that now we have to really talk about it in education and it might, the more we can educate our youth and our young and, and doing everything such as video casting a, uh, a talk on globalization over the internet, as more we can do that in uh, secondary and post-secondary education is going to be more, um, more apt to enter the workforce in a global environment where telecommunications and conferencing and um, life and work over the internet is, is, is the new norm. He also uh, somewhat concludes his study in 2011 that the USA will need to produce one million more college graduates between their study in 2011 and 2020, which would be a 40% gain that all of these middle-level jobs and higher-level jobs that are going to require college educations 
we're going to need to produce one million more college um, uh, degrees to really be competitive in the global market and be able to be competitive um, and to drive uh, our our workforce and to add the appropriate jobs and to have those individuals graduate in college ready for the jobs that are then able to uh, to to push them forward. So, really, the important aspects of globalization that globalization is essentially a train that we can't stop. It's affected the world. It's affected all our technology that we've built over the last. Uh, several centuries that have allowed us to communicate, travel, and participate in the in the world as a general society instead of micro societies all over the world. That we are now in a collaborative effort and in a competitive effort to um, to get there first and to then use that uh, to fuel all our micro um, societies and their the economics and the workforces uh, and the education systems therein. And they all um, they all interact, and the sense that they all start to affect each other is when we start to look at how globalization has affected the third world, and how we might look at that as kind of warning signs of what might be going on in our own country and our own society, and then we look back to see what that is going to do to our workforce and what our workforce is going to need, and then we look back and see how we're going to use and change our education to drive that workforce. Thank you very much.